All right, thanks for watching. And have you ever wondered why the method of Gaussian elimination works? Have you ever wondered why whenever you row reduce a matrix, it gives you the solution of your equation? Well, in this video, we'll explain why this is true. So you can just row reduce in peace if you'd like. So, and as a model, consider the following equation that we'll solve. Uh, 2x, let's see, 2x1 plus 3x2 plus 4, um, no, plus 4x3 equals 5, and then x1 plus 2x2 plus 3x3 equals 4, and x2 plus 2x3 equals 3. Well, the way Gaussian elimination works is that, first of all, you write this as a matrix called an augmented matrix, which in this case would be 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 0, 1, 2, and 3. So this is the matrix that sort of encodes the system 2x1 plus 3x2 plus 4x3 equals 5, x1 plus 2x2 plus 3x3 equals 4, and x2 plus 2x3 equals 3. Okay. And then the next step people usually do in Gaussian elimination is to take this matrix and row reduce this. Row reduce this either in row echelon form or easier the reduced row echelon form. And if you do that, you get something like 1, 0, minus 1, minus 2, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 0, 0, 0, 0. So this is called reduced row echelon form, which is kind of a triangular form with the requirements that the pivots are 1 and the pivot columns. They're basically 1 and a bunch of zeros. Now, in another video, I've shown that you can always do this. You can always row reduce a matrix to become in reduced row echelon form. So this is not why we're here today. The, the reason why we're here today is to see why, first of all, uh, we don't lose or add any solutions. How come that using the row reduction, we get the exact same solutions as we started and the same solutions that we end. And in fact, let me do that. Let me prove this statement. So fact. Suppose you row reduce. You row reduce, let's call this matrix A, B, so the augmented matrix, to get this new matrix, let's call it A prime and B prime. And important, this matrix, new matrix, doesn't have to be in a reduced row echelon form. Could be any favorite echelon form you want, as long as you row reduce, then basically the solutions, so if one x solves ax equals b, if and only if x solves a prime x equals b prime. In other words, the solutions of our original system ax equals b is precisely equal to the solution of our new system a prime x equals b prime, which says that um, we're not losing any solutions by row reducing, we're also not adding some non-solutions when we row reducing. So we really get the same solution set. And why is that? The reason is, I don't know if you remember, I don't know if I made a video about this, but row reduction can be just written in terms of uh, invertible matrices, which are called elementary matrices. So the whole process of row reduction 
is just like multiplying by a gigantic invertible matrix, which is just a product of elementary matrices. So row reduction can be written in terms of elementary matrices. terms of what are called elementary matrices, so, which are really the building blocks of matrices. So really what we do, we starting from AB, we can get to our simpler system, A prime, B prime, by just pre-multiplying by an invertible matrix B. So that is the first thing. It's very important that B is invertible. So for some invertible. In particular, using this equation, we can actually write A prime and B prime in terms of the matrix B. And notice there is a nice foiling property with those two things. You can actually distribute A, distribute B over those two sub-matrices, and what you get is that BA, BB equals A prime, B prime. And now you can just compare the two subparts. We then get A prime is BA and B prime is BB. When I grew up, we always had this little witch, you know, like story called BB Blocksberg. So here it is again. So, and then what do we get? So A prime, we deduce that A prime is BA and B prime is BB. So what does that imply? It implies that if you solve AX equals B, you can actually get to A prime X equals B prime just by multiplying both sides by B. So in particular, BAX equals to BB, and we get A prime X equals B prime. In other words, if you have a solution of AX equals B, then you have a solution of A prime X equals B prime. And in particular, we're not losing any solutions because uh, solutions of this are contained in solutions of this. But it's possible that we're adding unnecessary ones. But it turns out, no, this doesn't happen because if A prime X equals B prime, then we know A prime is BA. So BAX equals B, B prime. Now, if B is arbitrary, that might be a problem because we could have the zero matrix or something and we would get zero equals zero, which is not very interesting. But remember, there's one thing we know about B, namely that B is invertible. So multiply by B prime, sorry, multiply by B inverse on both sides. Then we get B inverse BAX equals B inverse BB prime. This is the identity matrix. This is the identity matrix. Sorry, there should be B. And therefore, what we get, AX equals B. In other words, if you start with a solution of A prime X equals B prime, then that solution must also satisfy AX equals B. And in particular, the solution sets are the same because AX equals B is equivalent now to AX A prime X equals B prime. And really this property, it's what makes Gaussian elimination work. Because again, what did we start with? We started with a very complicated system and now we row reduced it to get a much easier system. So let's, let's, let's remind ourselves what the easier system is. A prime B prime is just one zero minus one minus two, zero one, two, three, 
and 0, 0, 0, 0. What this becomes in terms of systems, it's simply x1 minus x3 equals minus 2, x2 plus 2x3 equals 3. And you see, by nature of the pivot business, we can always solve for the pivot variables in terms of the non-pivot variables, which here is the third variable. So just by the form of being like lower, I guess, upper triangular, we, this actually implies that we can always solve this system because uh, given that there exists a solution, of course. Because what do we have here? We get x1 is x3 minus 2 and x2 it's minus 2x3 plus 3. And then we can just solve for x, which is x1, x2, x3. Which, remember, x is the solution of the original system, which is the same as the solution of this system. So because we can solve this easier system, just by reduced row echelon formness, we can solve the original system as well, which in this case becomes, I guess, x3 minus 2, minus 2x3 plus 3, and then x3, which you can write as x3 times 1 minus 2, 1, plus minus 2, 3, 0. And therefore, again, using this process of row reduction, which preserves the solution, and the fact that the matrix is so simplified that you can solve the system directly, we have that actually, if there's a solution, Gaussian elimination always works. And if there's no solution, you can also see that in the matrix, that would happen if there's a row of the form 0, 0, 0, something else. And that will be the point of another video when we have non-existence of solutions. So hopefully this little overview you know, um, calms your minds a little bit because now, from now on, you can just row reduce in three piece because you know solutions are preserved and you know because of the form of the matrix, you actually get us, you're actually able to solve for the system. Um, all right, if you like this and you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.